Hey friends, whether you're musically trained or not, sometimes coming up with chord progressions can be a challenge. If you're not musically trained, maybe you just don't know what makes a good chord progression. If you are musically trained, sometimes you're just not inspired. What we're gonna do in this video is look at some unique ways to create chord progressions using Ableton Live that are in key, that are inspiring, and that sound really good. Let's check it out. Okay, so check this out. I'm just going to play the same note over and over again, and it's going to yield different usable and in-scale chords. So let's put it in context of a beat. I'm going to play in a rhythm that's going to yield the chords that I want. Some of those chords I really liked, some of those chords I really didn't. Now what's cool about this method is that instead of thinking about which notes I want and really getting into the weeds with all that, I can simply sit back and have an experience and listen to what the machine is generating and choose which one of those chords that I actually want to use for a song, okay? But before we get there, let's go ahead and learn how to build this up from scratch, okay? So I'm going to delete these items first and then we're going to build it up. Right now we just have this voice. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to work with some MIDI effects to make this happen. So over in Ableton's browser, we're going to look at MIDI effects and we're going to grab an expression control. This is the first thing that we need to use in order to do this. Okay. The next thing we need is a scale. So what's cool about scale is that if you click on the little drop down menu, you can choose what scale you want to do. Okay. So let's go ahead and choose. I was using a Lydian mode. I really like Lydian mode in general for music. So I'm going to leave that there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a chord. So chord just generates notes, right? And if you use this shift control, you activate that note. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to expression control. We're going to switch this over to random mode. So there are six lanes to do different things. We're going to choose these first four lanes to do random. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to map those to the different notes inside of this chord. So we're just going to choose four notes. Because I, I'm not editing these other ones, these actually won't generate any output, just the shift one, two, three, and four. Now, if I go ahead and play this right now, we're generating chords, right? But those chords are wild. They're way out there, right? They're all over the place. What I'd like to do instead is take the range that's available for these notes and make it lower. So what's really cool about this is that we could actually take the minimum and the maximum and we can shrink the range down a little bit. So maybe this first note will be like my lowest note. So I'll say, all right, maybe from 15 to 30%. The second one, maybe we'll go from 20 to 40%. Then maybe we'll go from 29 to 44, so on and so forth. You can see kind of what I'm doing here, what the, the idea is here. So now I've taken the ranges of available notes and shrank them down a little bit. Let's go ahead and listen to the result now. Cool. So now we're generating coherent notes within the scale that we chose. Now you can also say, all right, maybe this is something you want to do within a song that you're already doing. Let's say my song happens to sound Lydian, it's got a Lydian mode going on to it, but it's not in the key of C. You can take the bass and move the bass to whatever key you're working within. So for example, let's go ahead and just grab a different scale and let's say, all right, I'm working in the minor. Okay. So pentatonic minor, and maybe we'll choose a uh, I don't know, maybe we're working in F-sharp, right? So now if we take a listen to this, we're generating coherent notes in F-sharp minor. Minor pentatonic just means that there's five notes to choose from within each octave. Okay, so that's all fine and good. And something that you could do is you could simply just record the audio out of this as you're playing through and then take those chords and arrange them using waveforms. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this a step further and we're actually going to record the MIDI coming out of this track. So check this out. What we can do is we can make a new MIDI track. Okay. And this time the input, the MIDI input is going to come from track one. Okay. Now check this out. If I'm playing track one, we can see the MIDI coming in via post effects right here. Check this out. We've got MIDI coming into this track. So something I could do is I could maybe just arm both of these tracks so that they both record at the same time. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and play the rhythm that I want, all right? And we're gonna have these different chords that are gonna get generated. Check it out. Okay. 
Okay, so now I've busted out a bunch of these different chords. What I can do now is I can take the actual voice or the, the instrument off of this track where the random MIDI generation is happening. I can, sh I can click on the first device, which happens to be Ableton Drift. I can shift click on the reverb over here, hit Command C or Copy, and then I can just right click into this track and paste it. Okay. Okay, so the final step I'll do is I'll go ahead and delete this track because I don't need it anymore, right? I've already generated my MIDI. Okay, so now we have this track and we're ready to roll. It has no input now, so now we're just going to hear the raw chords that we recorded on this. And I like this second chord, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this first chord. I'm going to select this entire second chord, hold Option, and click and drag backwards. What this will do is it will allow me to copy those that chord and then drag it, right? So now we get... That's a pretty nice chord. Let's go ahead and hunt for some chords here. I kind of like this as a second chord, so I'll go ahead and delete the second chord here. I'll select this chord here, and now I can just hold Option, click and drag it over to where I wanted it, right? So it'll be like this. Okay. We could also just quickly quantize this by selecting these three, holding Command and clicking U, so now we get... All right, so I like my first run thus far. Let's go ahead and instead, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the second section of this riff. So I'll go ahead and delete these chords because I like these chords back here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to select these chords right here, and then I'm going to just drag them over to here. Now let's go ahead and take this chord and drag it over here, okay? So now I'll just go ahead and delete these, and I'm going to just simply loop this part right here, all right? Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is that you can actually fold the entire piano roll down to a specific scale, and that's really going to come in handy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Scale, and we did F sharp, minor, right? And we did minor pentatonic, so we didn't have that many options for notes. But I'm going to leave this on F sharp minor here, and check this out. If I click Scale, boom. Now only uh, notes that are available within the scale are going to appear here. So let's take a listen to this. And maybe I'll add a bass note here. And then also, in order to listen to notes we're entering into the piano roll, we're gonna turn on this headphone thing. And then maybe I want the bass line to go boom, boom, boom. Right? And let's see how that sounds. So we're getting close, but this last chord has got a little bit of uh, uh, discord to it, <laughs> if you will. So let's, let's kind of adjust these notes to make them work. And what's cool is that I'm using the scale. Wherever I drag these notes, they're going to be right. Okay, so let's take a listen. Maybe I'll add an octave up for that D. Two notes next to each other may be a bit discordant. Maybe we'll spread that out a bit. Let's try this now. That might be a bit too uh, fifth heavy. Maybe we'll do something like this. Okay, let's see how that goes. You know what? I'm thinking that this B actually could maybe sound better as a C sharp. Nice. Okay, rad. Let's look at the next example. And in this example, we're going to do this a totally different way. So I'm actually going to just copy this beat, get it over to another section. Go ahead and arm this track. So this is what this voice sounds like. Right? So let's say that I found a chord that I like. That's a kind of nice chord. And I sort of have an idea in my head of what the rhythm is. Check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and record this. Okay, so that's maybe the rhythm I want to do. I got a weird note in there. So, cool. I'll go ahead and quantize this real quick. Maybe I want this to be a bit more legato. Okay, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our scale mode in the piano roll. 
And then we're going to choose F sharp, and this is F sharp minor, is what this is in. Now, because the piano roll is only showing notes that will work within F sharp minor, we actually can select and drag these notes up and we'll actually be transposing the entire chord. This is so cool, check this out. And so maybe these next chords, I could drag them down. Hear that? Right? How cool is that? <laughs> so what I can do is I can actually go ahead and maybe we'll duplicate this. And then in this clip, we'll choose a different chord for this one. Check this out. Right? So now, check this whole really awesome chord progression out. Boom. Let's get in here and maybe make this a little bit more fun and complex, right? So maybe this chord could go up. There we go. Maybe we'll shift this down one. And maybe this last chord will jump back up. So check it out now. So now here's a situation where there may be a note that I don't want. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Cool, so you can see how easy it is to take a chord and to simply shift it within the scale that you're working in. But what if you want to add some accidentals or notes that don't fit within a scale in a specific part in a riff? Well, you could just turn scale off and then move that. And then we're going to turn off scale here. So now we have access to all the notes. Let's take a listen to this again. And maybe we want to just do a chromatic right here. So we'll add a C right here. <laughs> right? See, both the B flat and this F, they don't normally fit within this scale, but in this specific part, it kind of sounds nice to have a little bit of what you would consider an accidental, right? Or notes that don't necessarily work in the whole song, but just work in this little tiny section, right? Now take a listen to the whole riff. Cool, so between using random, chord, and scale, and then also using the scale constraints inside of the piano roll, you really can come up with some awesome chord progressions, and sometimes not even have an idea when you sit down to write music. This is a really powerful thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If Ableton's your thing, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you.